the last session. How was the last session? I want a frank feedback. And everybody also will get a chocolate at the end of it for participating. I appreciate all of you. So, because of paucity of time, less time, I'm just going to show you a few demonstrations about handwriting and talk a bit about it. But before that, we have something else happening. All right? So in the break, somebody wanted to ask me a question. Are there any questions that you want to ask me? Anybody has any questions? What did you understand from the last session? What is it that you liked? What is it that you didn't like? What is it that you want to practice? Come on, I want a dialogue. Any questions? Yes, you can take the mic to her. My question for you is, like you had mentioned in your slide that what is the what is your purpose what is the purpose of your life i want to ask you the same question what was the purpose of a life when do you realize for the first time like like we are just uh, now thinking what my purpose need to be what i need to be or something like that what have you thought at that time wonderful question thank you very much how many of you wanted to ask this question to me? How many of you here wanted to ask? Jay has been asking questions to us. Can we ask questions? Why shouldn't we ask him questions? How many of you wanted to ask the same question? Good question. Thank you very much. What made me start this? At the age of 27, I had tried a variety of businesses and I was not happy with my school college qualifications because it didn't teach me what I wanted to learn. So at 27, I went through this process of finding out what I like and love to do. And the whole world told, you're stupid, you're idiotic. What are you going to do in handwriting and calligraphy? What are you going to do with your chatterboxism? You can't do anything much. To cut a long story short, from being a third class in my college, I got a third class degree. I don't know what is third class, Adesh, in your country. Third division. Third division. I want to tell you, school, college, syllabus called me third division. And then I told him, I am world division. I am world class. Hey, you're mad, huh? You're third division. You're telling you're world class. How, is, how can that happen? Now, people wanted to introduce me. Now, over to Adesh. They could see. And you could also ask them the questions in Nepali. Because I get a feedback that language has been a barrier for some of you. So I would request Adesh to translate or interact with you in Nepali. I only learned few words in the last few hours from Adesh. Adesh has been my Nepali teacher. Maestro Kesi Janardhan, a sadharan chamatale variyeka sadhak, prakritik sadgun ka ek janmajat bigya, so adhenra so nirman ka gyata, manav sastri, sikshabit, lekhak, corporate trainer, mentor, bogolbit, samad sastri ebong samajik sudhar ka abhiyenta, vivinna fomra abhiyan ka sastapak, That's me. I found my natural abilities in handwriting. Thank you. Calligraphy, teaching. I don't have an MBA, but I started teaching MBAs in various universities. I got into the board of studies, board of education, board of examiners, set syllabus for MBAs in various universities in my country. Went on to train a lot of people in the corporate world, be it IBM or be it all the big names that you know. I have trained most of them in various parts of the world. 
Handwriting took me from America, A to Z, New Zealand. I've traveled the whole world, delivered lectures at Oxford, Cambridge, a variety of universities, have got a lot of appreciation and awards and rewards locally, nationally, internationally, because I followed my passion. My passion is to teach, to train, which comes to me naturally. I've read a lot of books beyond the syllabus. Any subject I like, I have a dozen and more books. Then I interact with a lot of people who are experts, get the knowledge from them, assimilate it, reason it, and then apply it. Then my own research work led me to all parts of the world to understand various problems people face in writing, in teaching, in learning certain subjects. And that's been a wonderful journey of my life. Enjoying every day, every part of the world I visited, interacting with every person that I've come across. I do what I like and love to do. But by paper qualification, I am a company secretary. I don't know if you have something called as a company secretary course in Nepal. A company secretary is one who runs a public limited company. And I'm a postgraduate in marketing, advertising, and public relations. I'm also a postgraduate in human resource development, after which I said I'm going to go on self-studying mode. Whichever subject I liked, I bought enough books, read them, tried to reason them, and then get into various activities and experience it myself. So that's how I learned a lot of subjects from A to Z. So if you are interested in any subject, read more, reason more, and apply it, learn it with experience. That's what I appeal to you. Thank you very much. Let's get to <laughs> handwriting. How many of you like handwriting? How many of you don't like handwriting? Do you like to write? Put your hand up. So there's only one teacher putting his hand up. How many of you like to write? How many of you don't like to write? Do you have handwriting in school? Do you have? What kind of handwriting? Cursive? Italics? Cursive. How many of you have got a remark, you must improve your handwriting? Very good. How many four hands going up? Four chocolates will go. Being frank and accepting that you got a remark saying, you must improve your handwriting. Who's that? Hand up, please. You must improve your handwriting. Please pass it on. You too? Ah. Here, one more. And then, who else? So, what did you do to improve your handwriting? Teacher said you must improve your handwriting. What did you do? And there are some teachers here. Please don't feel bad. What did you do to the student? You must improve your handwriting. Some of you have written that in the notebook of the students. How did you feel when you see that? You must improve your handwriting. And how will I improve my handwriting? How to improve, yeah? Bolo na. Now the teacher Lika, you must improve your handwriting. And you have a friend who comes and says, who wrote this, yeah? You must improve your handwriting. My teacher wrote. That itself needs improvement. Why should you improve, yeah? Right or wrong? Some of you have felt it, but never had the courage to tell it. Many teachers around the world themselves have bad handwriting. Don't blame them. You know why? Why teachers have a bad handwriting? Their teachers did not teach them properly. And their teachers did not teach them properly. The British gave a wrong system. So you're all victims of a wrong system. So don't blame the teacher also. But because they are a teacher, they say improve your handwriting. But how to improve? What to improve? What are the methods you're using in Nepal? I don't know. How do you introduce children to handwriting in school? At what age? What stage? And what do you do? How were you taught handwriting? How did you learn handwriting? Come on, tell me. There's a book? What book? Cursive book. Aha. And you have a book in front of you? That's also got something like the cursive book? With dots. Okay, okay. Now, what are these four lines? 
Even in that cursive book, you found four lines? Ah, yes, J. What are these four lines? No idea. Who said that? Superb. No idea. So, you are learning without reasoning and understanding. So, you said no idea. Very good. Very good. Hey, come on, yeah. what are these four lines? Why you want to write in these four lines, yeah? Hmm? What are those two lines, four lines? Two red lines, two blue lines. Ha ha. Can I ask the teachers? Because in any teacher training program, be it B.Ed, M.Ed, or somebody does a PhD in education, or it could be a diploma in teacher training, all over the world, I've traveled all over UK. I've taught in UK to the British how to write properly. Europe, Middle East, Far Eastern countries, Australia, New Zealand, America, everywhere I've gone there, and I've found handwriting has been a problem because British made a mistake and they didn't know that they made a mistake. Copywriting is the wrong methodology because when you copy, the first line is printed and the second line, as somebody said here, you got dot, 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 who said that? Dots. So you go over the dot and you write. Hmm? Then what happens? You write the next line. Next line. How many of you teachers have seen or parents have seen the children's handwriting quality deteriorating the moment you come to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth line? How many of you have seen the writing quality is going bad? Why? Right or wrong? First line is all right, second line, third line, fourth line, fifth line goes ding dong bell, pushes in the well, ding dong bell. How many of you have had the problem? You start okay, but then it goes deteriorating because in copywriting, you see the first line and write the next line. When you write the next line, you see the previous line and your previous line is not printed line, it's a horrible line. So it gets horrible. Now imagine. If I give you, uh, okay, maybe now I will ask for the camera to shoot what I write. I will write in cursive itself for you, okay? And let me see your handwriting also. How normal cursive has to be, how cursive, you can come to my, oh, you can be on the left or right, okay, 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 fine. Are you able to get me on the? Oh, right. How many of you write cursive like this? Huh? How many of you write like this? Now, in copywriting, I'm going to show you something interesting. Supposing there is a first line which is written like this. I went to the market. Now, how many of you will say, will write the copywriting, I went to the market. How many of you wrote like this horizontally? Put your hand up. I went to the market, I went to the market. Some people said, what a bloody boring activity, man. Asking me to write copywriting. Hey, 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 hey. Went, went, went to, to, to the, the, the market, market, market. There was a jamming of the market because you didn't find the space. Uh, maybe you should come this way, then they could find it properly. 
I went to the market, I went to the market to create a market jam. It's boring, so you filled it up vertically, you had all kinds of issues. Now, copywriting is not the right methodology. Construction of letters is very important. Okay? Can we define handwriting? What is handwriting? Handwriting is a art. Come on, anybody else? What is handwriting? Handwriting is a visual expression of speech and a means by which we deliberately set down messages that we want to communicate. That's the definition of handwriting. Many people say you must have good handwriting. What is good handwriting? Hmm? What is good handwriting? Okay. Oh, so when we get the camera on, no, you have to come this side. Uh, maybe, is it possible? No? Then I'll come that side. Now, would they be able to, if you focus on that, would they be able to see it properly? Because they were seeing it upside down. So we can have maybe one screen for the camera, one screen for the slides. Is it possible? Now, is that? Ah, we got it now. Good. So, can we have one for the slides? One screen showing the slides. How many of you would like to write cursive like this? Right on top, like this. Hmm? Good. How many of you lose marks because you have bad handwriting? Brilliant people losing marks. Don't worry, you are not to be blamed. The system went wrong. I will show you the simplest way of learning how to write well. And this cursive writing is called cursed writing. Because when you write fast, okay. So we got on both the screens. One screen for camera, please. Yes, one. Oh. Is it possible? Or am I asking for the impossible? The camera, if it is there, you won't get the slides. Okay, now we'll say camera will go off Slides will come on. Then I will say camera, I will say slides. Is it too much to ask? Can we do it? Oh, uh, slide is here. Oh, very good. Oh, wonderful. Hmm. Then Connoisseur School welcomes you. You can see, the, uh, can you go a little bit that side? No. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. We have an answer for it now. I am going to go a little more left. <coughs> so that. He moves a little more to the left so that you can see the slides. Are we in sync now? Good? Okay, you can see the slides. All right. See, there are things that people don't understand around the world about handwriting. This got, it's got seven elements. Handwriting is what you see and write in schools. Handwriting is the basics of communication to be taught in schools. When somebody writes in different styles, that's when you call it lettering. There are seven elements of handwriting which people have to know. People mix up with that word called calligraphy. Everybody says calligraphy, calligraphy, calligraphy. Okay? So I'm going to tell you what these seven elements are. Handwriting for every human being who's educated. It can be in your local language or in English and you learn to communicate in the writing mode. It helps you with your cognitive skills. 
eye and hand coordination, vocabulary, memory, so many things improve when you write by hand. And if you have a beautiful handwriting, you will have a lot of people appreciating you. And you will get a lot of marks. A thing of beauty is joy forever. Your first impression should make the best impression. And your last impression should leave a lasting impression. Right? So, after handwriting, you can go to the next higher level called lettering, which you write in different styles. When you say calligraphy is the highest level where you must understand a lot of calculations, a lot of things about the height, width, various things, and you must have a spiritual dimension. So calligraphy is not to be taught in schools. It cannot be taught in schools, and calligraphy is only for people who are 25 plus with experience in life and maturity to understand the spiritual dimensions. Okay? That's the first vertical that you see. The next vertical going from bottom is graphology, graphonomy, and graphotherapy. That's a central vertical and a controversial vertical where graphology people say, I will find out what your character is from your handwriting. It's only about 60-70% guesswork. Graphonomy is a breakaway group. Like astronomy, they said we are more accurate than astrology. They are also telling, we will tell you who you are, what you are from your handwriting. Bull bull. I know, don't simply tell lies. They simply tell certain things and say you are like this, you are like that. Then they will also tell you, you can become rich if you are poor. If you have got any medical problem, we will cure it. All that nonsense they say and they try to fool people. So don't believe this graphologist and graphonomist. Graphologist, graphonomist and all. They have graphotherapy saying if you write like this, you will become rich. If you write like this, you will become successful. If you write like this, you will become famous. Absolute nonsense. Okay? Some people believe in it because they don't have self-confidence, they don't have self-assurance and they don't know who they are, what they are. Such people need these people. The last one is called question document examination where they find out forgery. You know, a lot of people copy your signature on a check or on some kind of a contract form or wills and then they try to take away your property, they try to rob your money. So that is in the police department to find out what is forgery. Now all the seven I have researched and I have gone into greater depths of it, written books and taught people across the globe. And I'm writing 16 more books on the subject. Handwriting is for schools. That's it. Lettering, maybe you can attempt after you're 16, 17, you're artistic, you can write something beautifully. I'll show you those uh, samples also. And then calligraphy is only the highest stage for people with maturity. If I show you the process of calligraphy, many of you may not understand because it needs a spiritual experience. So there are seven elements, okay? Now, that's a handwritten slide which I wrote in italics about 20 years ago. That's the definition. What does it say? Handwriting is a visual expression of speech and a means by which we deliberately set down messages we want to communicate. And what's a good handwriting? A good handwriting is legible. Come on, read it. And uniform in size. Each letter is properly formed with proportionate height and width, right? Are you able to see that, right? And are you able to read it properly? It's not clear, is it? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, how do we improve the clarity of it? The slight clarity seems a little... Are you able to see this better? No? Okay. Maybe you can see it on the screen later or you can see it on the laptop screen. Okay? And it's spaced properly between words and lines. What's the spacing between words you give? How do you space between words? What did your teacher tell you? And teachers, what do you tell them? If there are any primary school teachers? Between words, how much space should you give? Huh? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, chocolates are far away. Can somebody help me with the chocolates, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said something interesting. 
Your finger. Very good. Which finger? Which finger? I guess, sir. Uh, our teacher told you some finger. Which finger? Four finger? One finger spacing. Okay, how old are you now? You're 17. When did your teacher tell you? Five. At five, what was your finger size? What is the finger size now? Hasn't it grown? So, one finger spacing was right when you were a child. But as you grow up, your finger grows along with you. So, one finger still is there in your mind. But now, one finger will become too far. So, the spacing between your words when you write in English is one letter O. In your own handwriting size, one letter O is the spacing between words. What's the spacing between lines? When you write A, B, C, D, you have the G, J, P, Q, Y, where you have descenders. And you have B, D, H, K, L, where you have ascenders. The first line descenders and second line ascenders should not touch each other. That is the spacing. And it should be controlled with those four lines. What are those four lines? The first line is called ascender line to limit your B, D, H, K, L. The second line is called as mean line. The third line is called base line on which all the letters rest. And the last line is called as descender line for your G, J, P, Q, Y. So what are those four lines you see? Ascender, mean, base, descender line. Each one has a name and it has a function. Then it controls the height, width of the letters. Otherwise, two red lines, two blue lines. Copy book, cursive book. OK. Uh, this doesn't seem to be coming up well. Mm. The first one was an illegible scrawl, and somebody had to decipher it. I'm sorry, with the LED, I think, uh, LCD panel, you're not able to see it clearly, right? Uh, okay. Uh, this is okay. This is called the copper plate style, which was written with that pointed nib which I will demonstrate to you here now. In 16th century, they wrote copper plate with that pointed nib, which split open when you had a downward stroke and had a fine line when you went to the upward stroke. This is what people did in England in 1600s, and all people in schools, colleges were asked to follow it. It's a painful, slow process where you have to dip and write, dip and write. So, in the 17th century, 18th century, people felt they should find a better way of writing faster because life was becoming faster. Then they said we will write in what is called as cursive. So you see, at the bottom, they have written copper plate. This is cursive. This is cursive. Then in cursive, when you write fast, it becomes like this. Look at the deterioration. Cursive is a curse style because of that. I would request uh, Adesh, can we have a few tissues, please? Can I get some tissues? So what is the right style of writing? Who taught the British how to write properly? Who taught the British how, what was the right writing? OK? It is italics. The Romans ruled Britain from 42 AD. Rome is in Italy, they went and taught them italics. Italics is unjoined writing. Now, when you write in your Nepali language, do you join up? Do you join and write? No. Then why should you join in English? Because? Screen. TR? It is not the trend. Because in English, they didn't know. And they said, write in copper plate and cursive. It created all the problems. Uh, no, no, no. English is not a trend. It was a mistaken thing. I'll show you italics now.
It was written unjointly, so there was clarity. This is what the British were taught by the Romans. And later, they went to copper plate, and they said cursive, and then they went into problems, and cursive started giving more problems. To write cursive, look at this. This is a, this is a wooden handle. It's called as a nib holder. And these are some nibs with which we write in different styles. And if you want to write in cursive, you had to have that kind of a copper plate nib first. This is a copper plate nib. See this? This is a copper plate nib. How pointed it is. And I'm going to fix it into this holder. Many people who do this will say I'm doing calligraphy. Calligraphy. This is not calligraphy. This is simple copper plate. I have to tune the nib like a musical instrument. This is how people wrote in 1700s and 1800s. And it's beautiful style, but it takes a lot of time. You need to master this. It takes a lot of time to master this. Then copper plate is also called in many ways as Palmer's, Zenarian, Spencerian, so many different forms as they followed it in Australia, New Zealand, America, and other parts of the world. Okay, somebody tell me your name and I'll write your name in copper plate. Huh? Slo slowly, slowly with this uh, spelling. P U K R, is it? Pukar Bhandari, spelling. B. A N D A R A. See how long it takes. You got to dip and write. This is the original copper plate. When they said this is difficult to dip and write, people went for a single nib where if I write Bukhar Bandari with a single nib, see how what is the kind of effect you get. When you write Bukhar Bandari fast today, how is it? This is the kind of deterioration that happens with cursive. And how fast to write? There are a lot of questions. See, we can talk for a long time about this. 
what is the speed of writing of a human being? Now, look at this Pukar Bandari in in italics. Then you have italic nibs to give it the enhanced effect. The italic tip. So, how do you like it? Would you also want to write like that? Would you like to write like this? So you have to go through one year of practice with the right way of doing it. Let me show you a few more slides where you will see Ah, these are some of my students' handwriting before and after. I don't think you can see it properly in this. Unfortunate. No, these are all not being seen well. So, you know, there are lots of things we could discuss. You could ask me questions about handwriting, and I will show you how to write well. And in italics, if you want to learn how to write, I have got seven basic exercises which I will demonstrate to you. With the seven basic exercises, if you master, you can write A, B, C, D beautifully. Once you learn how to write in italics, you can start writing in cursive beautifully. Okay? Now I'm going to show you that particular thing of in italics, what it is. Then for teachers and others, I can tell you I have brought in music and various seven elements, which are all the, what do you call, uh, natural things. And when you learn to I mean, write with music, it relaxes your mind. How many of you know Hindustani or the local Carnatic music in India, Sari Gama Padani? In your language also, is it Sari Gama Padani? How many of you are into Western classical music? How many of you play the guitar, the piano, and all that? Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, right? Seven. With that, you compose music. Harmonious music flows. So. Even in handwriting, when you write with a fountain pen, this is the fountain pen, right? Which camera is picking up? There or this? This is the one. Okay. The fountain pen is filled with ink and droplets of ink flow. It's like the plink plonk of the droplets of water falling from the tap into the bucket. The piano, when played very softly and very smoothly, it goes plink plonk like the water flowing, liquid flowing. When you write A, it's got a space in it. So the saxophone and the clarinet and the flute, the wind instruments give you the spatial effect. When you write your B, D, H, K, L and your G, J, P, Q, Y, the violins take you to a higher crescendo and give you a drop. When you write your T and F, the crossbar, the quick stroke of the violin. I'll also show you an, uh, a seven minute to eight minute experience you will have of closing your eyes, listening to the chants, breathing in deep and breathing out, and the meaning of the chants and the instructions I give my students how to write. And there are six and a half hours of music which relaxes you when you write, and it simulates your writing with music, and you en enjoy your writing. Before that, I'll show you the exercises. 
like the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, or Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Fa, Da, Ni. Right? Got it? Yes, good. So, what are those? You should be able to get horizontal straight lines. I'm going to be using only, you know, a vertical line, a horizontal line, and a diagonal line, a slightly slanted diagonal line. Okay? Or a slightly slanted line, different slants. With this strokes, can you write your ABCD? Just these three strokes? With these three strokes, can you write your ABCD? I'll show you, it's as simple as that. We call it alphabet engineering program because you're all going to become engineers building the letter part by part. Because you copied cursive without knowing how it came about, there were mistakes. Now, when you draw these horizontal lines and you move your hand across the page properly, this is the first exercise, like this sa. The next exercise is what we call as the long stems which you write from ascender to base line. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the thing is, they all must be parallel to each other and they must be equidistant. Then we have the short stems. Then we join the short stems with a diagonal line. This is the diagonal line. And it has a happen bend at the bottom. This is the happen bend. Then we cover this whole thing with a horizontal line on top. This we call as the A counters. These are the exercises you will do to strengthen your U, V, W, and Y. Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da. Now what's left? Ni Sa, no, Ni. Only Ni, seven. Ni sa becomes, sa becomes what? This is for H, M, and N. Okay, leave this out. This is sa, re, ga, ma, pa, da, ni. Ni comes here now, the opposite of it. If you master these exercises properly, then how do you write A, B, C, D? Two short stems, join it with a horizontal line on top, come down from the mean line to the base line, take a hairpin bend, join up with the next short stem, come down the second short stem and exit. What is it? With straight lines, haven't we written a lowercase a? What are the parts? Two short stems, one horizontal line, and a diagonal line for the main body and a exit stroke. How do you write B? A long stem and a short stem. Entry stroke, come down, B. From A, we don't close it completely, it's a C. Short stem and a long stem. Insert the A counter here, entry stroke, exit stroke. E from A and C, E. Short stem and a long stem. We got a D, I'm showing you D again. F is like this. Slightly longer than the short stem. Long stem, if you have a short stem and a long stem descender, is a G. Long stem and a short stem, entry stroke, come down the long stem. Diagonal stroke, join the next short stem, come down and exit. Entry and exit stroke for a short stem I, entry stroke, long stem descender J, entry stroke and a long stem 
two diagonal strokes K, L, three short stems, then we have two diagonals with an entry and exit stroke. Now I don't need to give commentary. As you watch, you will understand. This is the basic construction. To bring in beauty, <laughs> simple with straight lines, we got it. Why are you struggling with cursive? To bring in beauty, what we will do is, this is the A counter, where we will chip off this portion. This is the B counter we did. We'll chip off this portion. Now see the A, B, C, D. How does this look? If you write like this, your clarity will be better, your marks will flow, your appreciation will be better. Right, these are the italics. Now, how do I check it? All these must be parallel to each other. See, are they parallel? All the diagonals must be parallel to each other. That's when you get print quality. This is how you check. If you go wrong, we can find out where are you going wrong, which part is going wrong. If somebody writes here like that, what's happened? There's no proper short stem. This short stem is not okay. Somebody writes here like that. This counter is not closed. And we have a lot of malformations. Somebody writes like this. What is that? My dear, and already it looks like my clear. Huh? My clear. Somebody wants to write. What is that? Aluminium. You guessed it because there is an L and two dots. After A and L, what is it? Series of waves. Samp ke dikta hai. Snakes, isn't it? See, these are all the problems you will face when you write in cursive writing. Italics is the best. It is unjoined beautiful, the original form taught by the British, I mean taught by the Italians to the British. Okay? Since time was short, I had to speed up and just show you. Now that you've seen the demonstration, you can pick it up. Like the Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da, Ni, and how you build your strokes and you get your letters. Now I will give you an experience of what I do in my classes. And we'll close with that. And after that, if you have any questions, I can answer your questions. Okay? And after that, I also need to give a book to Mr. Koirala. The first book that I wrote in 92 on handwriting in Asia Pacific region, bought by Luxa Pen Company, and we sold about 15,000 books in 92, 93. Now I'm writing more books. When they come up, come out, I will let you know. The musical experience, you're going to close your eyes until the voice says open your eyes you shouldn't and then there are some instructions i gave about pen hold posture paper position table height now actually this table is too low for me i had to bend down a lot it's uncomfortable if the table was at this height and slanted that's the best for me to write your handwriting comes out better when you have the right table height and the chair height fountain pen is the best writing instrument ever that was invented in this world Ball pen, gel pen, dot pen are scribbling instruments. 
a pencil is fine. How to choose a pen? The pen has to be thick at the place where you hold so that your finger pads can hold them properly. Like how you buy your footwear? Can you wear one size small, one size big? No, you must get the perfect size. Similarly, you must get the perfect size of a fountain pen for your hands and your fingers. There are so many things like that. I will show you, uh, well, I will play the music for you to have an experience because I got a feedback that some parents and others said, time is a constraint, we need to finish before five. But if there are others who say, I can be there after five also, I am ready to answer questions and show you, okay? How many of you want to stay back after five and ask questions? Or no more? No one? Everybody wants to go at five? Okay, I don't want to hold you back because if anybody is held back by force, you will not learn. I'll just give you the musical experience, okay? Could we connect a, a lead to the external speakers if you have from the laptop? Could we do that? Just to play the music? This audio doesn't come out well. That's why if there's a jack, it'll be nice. All right, may I request everybody to be silent, quiet, and listen to the instructions from the audio. This is the voice of the quill. Welcome to the Connoisseur's Quill and the Golden Hand. In the next few hours, we will be taking you into another world. A world of handwriting with meditation and music. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and exhale slowly. Breathe in. Take a deep breath and breathe out slowly. And exhale slowly. Take a deep breath and exhale slowly. Relax. Stay calm, cool and collected. Let us chant the following. Which means, may the Lord protect us together. May He nourish us together. May we work together, uniting our strength for the good of humanity. May our learning be luminous and purposeful. May we never hate one another. May there be peace peace and perfect peace. Shishyate 
which means that is perfect. This is perfect. What comes from such perfection truly is perfect. What remains after perfection from perfection is yet perfect. May there be peace, peace and perfect peace. In our context, we are looking at perfecting the skills in the art of writing. Which means, lead me from the unreal to the real. Lead me from darkness to light. That is, from ignorance to knowledge. Lead me from death to immortality. May there be peace, peace and perfect peace. In our context, we move from ignorance to the knowledge of handwriting and what we write will remain immortal long after our death. Open your eyes slowly. Get used to the surroundings. Stay calm, cool and collected. Pick up your writing instrument. Hold it between your thumb and your forefinger. Firmly and not too tightly. Support the shaft with your middle finger. Please do not apply pressure with your fingers. Let your hand be relaxed. Adjust your sitting posture. Keep your feet flat on the floor in front of you. Keep your back straight. Do not slouch. Be relaxed. Do not tense your muscles in any part of your body. Be relaxed. Adjust your writing sheet. Place it in your comfort zone. Right-handers, please hold the paper below the writing line with your left hand. Left-handers, please hold the paper below the writing line with your right hand. Do not rest your elbows on the table. Start writing slowly. Enjoy your writing exercise and enjoy your writing for the rest of your life. My support and guidance will always be there with you. You will discover the power of your handwriting. Now you can practice the strokes, enjoy your writing, and you must hold your pencil between your thumb and forefinger. Some people are holding with both the fingers. If you're giving too much pressure, 
Now sit properly, put your feet in front of you, don't cross your legs, put your feet flat on the floor and your thighs should be parallel to the floor, right? And your book should be in front of you to the right side, slightly slanted, okay? And then your elbow should not be on the table, take your elbow off, you can, you can focus here, I'll, I'll show you, focus here. This person's fingers, look at this. He is holding with double barrel pressure. Both the fingers here, see? He is giving double barrel pressure, so his fingers will pain, his wrist will pain, his forearm will pain, shoulder will pain, then he will say, I got a neck pain, then he will say, I got a headache when I write. Because his holding of the pencil is not right. And the pencil is so thin, and you must cut your nails, my dear, sorry. The nails will actually not allow you to hold the pencil properly. This is too tight, too much of pressure. The book should be like this. Your left hand should be holding the book below the writing line and you should write like this. And your back should be straight. Oh, you got a bag there. Oh my goodness. Mm. Back straight, feet flat on your floor, right? You must change your grip. Now, whatever I tell you, how to sit, how to hold your pen, how to write, you will listen to me. But you have been doing this for many years. So it's a habit. You will take six to eight months to correct yourself. That's where it's a one-year program where you will unlearn all the wrong things and learn the right things. And then you will perfect those seven strokes what I showed you. The Sari Gama Padani of writing or the Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti. And then you will also write in italics beautifully. And once you master italics, you can go to cursive. After you go to mastering italics and cursive, you see any design around you, straight lines, curved lines. You can write in any style by combining the curved lines and straight lines, and you can go to lettering. And then with the spiritual dimension, you can attain calligraphy. So let me end this session because the time was short. I thought I should give you some inputs and give you an experience in writing and feel it. And how is the music in the background? Six and a half hours of such music you will have. As the piano goes flink plonk, the droplets of ink comes out. And as you go writing, A, B, the space, the lute, the saxophone gives you the spatial effect. When you write your B, D, H, K, L, the violins are taking you to the heights. And when you write your G, J, P, Q, Y, they're giving you a drop. And when you cross your T and your F, it's like the violin bow which gives you a quick stroke. Ching. So enjoy your writing with this exercise, relax and be stress free and every 15 minutes I have a reminder coming up saying check your forefinger pressure, be relaxed, check your posture, check your paper position, all that will repeat every 15 minutes because bad habits die hard, old habits die hard and the word habit, I couldn't show you on the screen because it was not clear, imagine the word habit, okay let me write it because there's a camera available, I'll write it. It's a very stubborn word because you've formed a habit for 10 years, 12 years, 8 years and you want to get over it. This word habit is a deadly word. What is so deadly about habit? Okay. I have a habit which I want to get over. I have some habits. See how I'm holding my pen. Can you focus it this way? See how I hold my pen. Between the thumb and forefinger, there is no pressure here. See, somebody is giving pressure like that. Look at your own fingers. How many of you are giving pressure like this? Unwanted pressure. Some people are holding with two fingers and giving pressure like this. Look at this, two fingers pressure. Some people are holding it like this with all the fingers. That's all wrong. The correct way to hold is like this. Between your thumb and two fingers place your pen to write with comeliness and grace. Your thumb first aloft as high as bestow. Your forefinger next to your middle below. Hold softly your pen. Lean lightly thereon. Write softly therewith. For ill tricks are soon caught by people like me, but not so soon gone, said Peter Bales in 1569. And it still holds good even today. Ill tricks I will catch, but it's not so soon gone. Okay, the word habit. Now I want to remove the H. What is remaining? 
a bit of that habit is still remaining. Bloody hell. Remove the A. What is remaining? Huh? Bit is remaining, huh? Remove the B. It is still remaining. It's such a stubborn word, habit. So to get over it, you need six months to one year and rewrite a new habit. Understood? You could also write beautifully and you can get the power of writing. I call it power handwriting because it has worked wonders for me. It has taken me around the world. I have met most famous personalities and a lot of things have happened because the power of handwriting has done wonders to me. A lot of experiences I've had. If I start sharing all the experiences, you'll have to stay back till seven. So I will let you go now. It's five minutes past five. Thank you very much for the patient hearing and being here till this time. I have thoroughly enjoyed myself being with you. I hope you too have enjoyed yourself. If you have any questions, I can answer that. For those who want to, ask any specific questions. Now, I would request Mr. Koirala to come here. I would like to hand over a copy of my book, which I wrote in 92, the first ever book in Asia Pacific region. It's called The Book of Handwriting, Right to be Read. Out of print, I got one copy specially made for Mr. Koirala. Thanks to him and Dr. Sashank Koirala, as well as Acharya, who invited me across here to share my experiences in Be Your Own Master and handwriting with you. To Mr. Koirala. I will write it and give it to you later. Name, I'll write your name everything later. Because the time is short. Any feedback? Yes. 